Hey everybody and welcome back. Fresh off the heels of doing something really stupid for a really long time, I decided to do something else really stupid that would take me a really long time. Today, we're on Ginger Island, because I wanted to see how much money I could make from something other than pineapples and ancient fruit for the first time in my life. Ginger Island is really neat, because you can plant literally anything you want here. It's basically an enormous greenhouse. And just like the greenhouse, your plants stay well and healthy and fresh forever. And there are exactly zero pros. That means that a lot of folks use this as an endgame home for approximately 7 billion ancient fruit plants. You can just swing through once a week and keg them all, making an absolute butt-ton of money. Or, if you're speedrunning to a billion gold, maybe you just sleep for a week and then get up and harvest everything. I don't know. I only do bullying speedruns. But what if we wanted to do something other than ancient fruit for our thousandth file? In fact, could we do something completely different? Like, what if we didn't even want to pick our crops? You might know that Fairy Rose Honey is worth a good chunk of change. Unfortunately, it's only available in the fall, and you can't really take advantage of the bee houses inside the greenhouse, which I guess makes sense. But on Ginger Island, it's always whatever season you need it to be. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to plant just enough fairy rose to cover as many bee houses as possible. This is definitely not an optimized path, but it is repeatable. Now I'm doing this with cheats because I didn't want to buy all of the materials I needed or harvest them because I'm lazy. I also paused time so I wouldn't have to worry about trying to get things done in a rush or staggering which days the hunting was done, you know? But you could absolutely do this in a legitimate game. It would just take, like, you know, a, a long, a, a really long time. <laughs> Not to mention the materials. I gave myself enough beehives to cover the entire map. Bee houses, sorry. I'm gonna make that mistake a few times. I ended up using about 840 of them, so uh, you might want to get those maple trees tapped early, because at a production rate of roughly once in nine days, it would take one tree over 67 in-game years to produce enough maple syrup for this project. Now granted, you could have a lot more than one tree, and you would need to for this stupid idea. But you'd also need about 34,000 wood, 6,720 coal, and one iron bar for each beehive, which means more coal and more iron. If you bought all those materials in year two or later, it would actually cost you, uh, let me do some quick napkin math here, about 4.64 million gold. So maybe you couldn't actually do this on a normal file. At least, not very quickly. On top of that, we are of course going to need some fairy rose. I planted 134 fairy rose flowers, and at a cost of 200 gold per seed packet, that would add about uh, 27,000 gold to our expenses, which is actually not too bad. But let's just round up and say we've spent roughly 4.7 million gold on this endeavor. That is pretty costly, but you know what they say, you gotta spend money to make money. So, why is this a good deal? Or is it even a good deal? Well, kind of. Bee houses kick out honey every four days. Normally, honey is just kind of there. You need it for mead, you need it for the farm warp totem, it's an option for the artisan bundle, and you'll want to sell at least one for complete shipment. It's also a fairly well-liked gift, with only Maru and Sebastian hating it for some reason, and everyone else likes it. But honey only sells for 100 gold, 140 with the artisan perk. So it's not really a great source of income, unless you're growing some flowers nearby. Any flower, and I mean flowers specifically, not forage like daffodils, can change your honey, but fairy rose is the best. Fairy rose honey can sell for 952 gold with the artisan perk, and if it's popping up every four days, that's actually pretty decent. It's never gonna outpace a cow, for example, or a barn full of cows, but you can squeeze 22 accessible bee houses and a flower into the space of one barn. That's still not going to outpace a barn full of cows if you have the machines to make cheese, since you'd be making about 5,796 gold every day from your cows, which is almost 23,184 every four days. The fairy rose honey is going to make you just under 21,000 every four days, but it's pretty close, and you know what? You can't have cows on Ginger Island, so there. Back to the island here. I spent way too long planning out what my route would look like on the Stardew Valley Planner website. It's a neat little site that lets you see what your farm, or in this case, Ginger Island, would look like. And it shows the radius for the bee houses so I could see exactly where to place everything. 
I absolutely could have planted fewer fairy rows since there's a lot of overlap between the houses and the flowers, but at least the eastern side of my farm is like fairly navigable. The western side though, it's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I forgot all about the various like bushes on the island, and for some reason they don't show up on the planner, so I had this intricate pattern all laid out in my head, and I was prepared to just kind of like start routing it out, placing paths and everything, right? Well, no. That changed pretty quick. Instead, I just kind of had to react on the fly, placing new paths, hoping that everything would work out. It becomes a little chaotic, like it was already chaotic, but now it's atrocious. There will certainly be some bee houses that can't reach the fairy rose flowers that are, you know, kind of scattered all over the place, but eh, is what it is. So now that we've gotten all the plants in the ground and all the bee houses um, on, on the ground also, it's time to run around and collect everything. Because we have a bunch of plants right next to the path, it's going to be really important to only leave ourselves a little bit of space in our inventory. If we only have one spot for the fairy rose honey, it'll all stack in our bag, and we won't have to worry about accidentally picking any flowers. But I gave myself two spaces, because I was pretty certain that some of our honey would end up just being the cheap wild honey. If you routed this a little better than me, you could probably avoid that, though. After this, it's just a matter of running through the farm and picking up all your honey. I would recommend downing a quick triple shot espresso and munching on your favorite speed-boosting food before you start. I kind of wish I had turned time back on at this point so I could see how long it takes to harvest everything because it felt like it took a little while. Okay, let's chuck all this stuff into the bin and see just how much money we made. So 556,400. That's actually less than I was expecting to be honest. So I'm just going to open up the farming tab and yep, okay, that's why. I don't have the artisan perk, uh, profession rather, on this save file. That means that each of these jars of honey should have been worth an extra 40%. We would have made about 779,000 if the perk were factored in, and that's not bad. That means we would recoup our investment for materials after our seventh harvest, so about two months. Now that's not ancient fruit wine levels of ridiculousness, but let me show you something really fun. Okay, I've reloaded my file here, and this time we have Automate installed. Automate is perhaps one of my favorite mods of all time. It does what it says, it automates. And what we're gonna see is that all those paths I put down earlier are actually acting like conveyor belts. Every bee house that is touching a path is gonna have its honey sent right into a chest. And if there are any bee houses not connected to the path, they'll still send their product to the chest as long as they're positioned next to another machine that's next to a path or a machine that's next to a machine that's next to a path. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. We're going to get all of the honey. The paths will pull all the products straight into the chests, and then we walk it over to the bin. Another hard day at work. Another three quarters of a million gold. Ugh, I'm going to need a nap after all that hard work. So what do you think? Does that give you any ideas of, like, silly things you want to do? Do you want to tell me how inefficient this was compared to other Ginger Island possibilities? Do you want to make fun of me for using mods? Whatever. Let it all out in the comments, and I'll see you next time.